Up next, a look at a licensed game both of us have gotten to play recently, Minecraft Builders and Biomes from Ravensburger. All right, Builders and Biomes was just released this year by Ravensburger. It was designed by Ulrich Blum. Now, the art isn't screenshots from the game, but for whatever reason, I couldn't find out who the artist was. It didn't seem to be accredited on the box. I couldn't see it on um, Board Game Geek or anything like that, which was kind of weird, but whatever. Now, Sean's the big Minecraft fan here, and when he heard this game was coming out, he actually went and found me a press contact so I could request a review copy of this game. Yeah, I was actually uh, watching the uh, Minecon live on on uh, YouTube, uh, which is the annual Minecraft big show that they do every year. Uh, and they announced this game and I hopped onto Twitter and uh, the PR people at Minecraft, who I follow, connected me with the PR people at Ravensburger and I passed that off to you. Yeah. And lo and behold. Yeah, it worked great. I sent Ravensburger an email and they were more than happy to send me a copy to check out. So thank you for that, Ravensburger. Even better, they sent me some other stuff too, which was awesome. I totally wasn't expecting that. So they really stepped up. They're like, oh, if you're interested in this game, what else do you want to review? Which is great. So up first, what's in the box? All right, the first thing you're going to notice when you open this is a big bag filled with large wooden cubes in four different colors. These are the big chunky cubes. Uh, the ones I first saw in Imhotep, Builder of Egypt. Not your little small resource cubes, but nice, chunky, I don't know, they're probably about one inch, maybe a little less. Uh, so that means they're great to handle for a wide range of ages and dexterities, but it's not all roses on that front. We'll get to that later. Uh, there's a rather thick rule book, which I got to admit, I was like, what the heck is this game about? But it's thick because it's in a wide variety of languages and that's what makes it so big. The rules are so, so they are not the most clear I've read. Um, I have a feeling English rules were a translation. This game, Ravensburger is a German board game company who exports their games here to North America. Uh, thankfully, though, there's lots of examples in the rule book. So that kind of helped us figure out what we were doing. Yeah, luckily, it's a pretty easy and straightforward game. I haven't actually picked up the rule book or read it yet. Uh, I think most people will probably, you know, one person will buy it, flip through the rule book get it to the table and you'll figure it out quickly. It's really yeah. not a tough game. Yeah, that being able to actually touch and see the stuff definitely helped with this one. Just reading it in the rule book was a little rough. Um, next, you have four player boards and a bunch of punch boards. Then I got to say, both were rather thin. The player boards are like terraforming Mars thickness, which means not thick at all. Uh, punch boards, uh, not quite as thin as the player boards, but also I would say disappointingly thin. Now, having played the game after that, there is a reason for this, I think, and that's because most of the tiles, there's like 64 of them in the game, are meant to be shuffled. So making them thinner definitely helps with that. But I got to admit, they just kind of feel cheap and flimsy. Yeah, and I think they made a compromise here, but in the wrong direction. Uh, if they were a bit thicker and more resilient, I'd have just dropped them in the box yeah. lid and shook to shuffle and, and been good. Whereas this way, you're actually trying to shuffle cardstock a thick a thick enough cardstock to make it difficult to shuffle yeah um and so it's a little awkward there now the stuff you are punching out of the punch boards are player pawns uh you put these in color coded plastic standees not the fanciest thing a meeple or something nice would have been a little nicer there are as i mentioned 64 terrain tiles uh, a bunch of treasure chest tiles that are a little smaller um some weapon tiles and some very useful rule and scoring summary tiles so oddly only in two sets, despite this being a four player game. Uh, there are some walls too for building this mining cube, which I'll get to in a minute. And then there's weapon tiles for each player. Technically weapon and potato tiles. Yes, but aren't the potatoes just bad weapons? I don't know. I, I, I pictured throwing a potato and it doing nothing. Uh, you can't actually throw, throw well, I mean, you can, you, can, you can drop anything, but you can't actually uh, throw potatoes. They, they really are just a way to uh, eat something, eat food that harms you in the game. Okay, see, I saw the potatoes, and I just thought you were throwing potatoes at the monster, and they did no damage. So that shows what Sean knows, Minecraft, and I don't. I, I got to admit, I wish the punch boards were thicker, but they work, mostly. Uh, the, the, my biggest nitpick, though, the, is the XP counter. They used to track your score on your player board. doesn't even fit on the spaces on the scoring track. Like, what, what happened there? Like, where was the designer? And those thin player boards are thin enough that I'm, I'm worried I'm going to feel uh, see a crease or fold in them every time I take them out of the box. I'm worried the cubes in the box, if I turn the box the wrong way, may 
pulled them. Uh, if you own this game and expect to play it a lot, I would highly recommend laminating those player boards. Yeah. They, they definitely made some interesting choices, uh, but let's be honest, there's a really good chance that they used an existing punch layout yeah. and put in some new graphics and ran it through the machine. Uh, while the XP token sizing mistake is dumb, um, it doesn't actually make a difference to the game. It just True. reduces the polish and, the, and the, the sort of professionalism feel of the game. Uh, but how does Minecraft Builders and Biomes play? Well, you start off by building the mine. This is done by creating this box structure out of walls that are on the punch boards. And then you pour in all the cubes and then you a little bit of shaking and shifting. Actually, everything should fall into place and make you a nice four by four block of cubes. And I got to admit, I was surprised. This works really well and it wasn't that hard to do. Now, the reason this works well is because of the finish on the cubes. Uh, it's a tiny little bit sort of a glossy paint. Uh, so they find their place in the walls like sand finding its level as it shakes around. Unfortunately, the next step is to take that the walls off the, the cube and they're still slick. And, and problems may occur. <laughs> Up next, after you've got your little mining brick cube thing, you lay out those 64 tiles in a four by four grid and stacks of four tiles each all face down. Then you're going to take those treasure chests we mentioned earlier, shuffle them up and place them on the end of each row and column, put your player pieces in the middle and you're good to go. Each turn, player's going to do two things. Each of the two things has to be different. This includes moving between the stacks of tiles. And when you move, you reveal everything that's around where your pawn ends. Uh, mining bricks from that block. Take trading cubes you've already mined to build a tile that you're next to or fighting a mob that's already been revealed. Or if you're at the edge near those treasure chests, collecting weapons if you're next to them. Now, technically, the chests contain tools and weapons, but any good Minecrafter knows that <laughs> any tool will damage a mob if you're in a pinch. Now, each non-treasure tile of those 64 tiles are either a building or a mob. There's definitely way more buildings than mobs. Buildings each have three features. The biome they belong to, a building material they're made of, and a building type. Now, mobs have a health level, an amount of XP points they give you for defeating them, and a potential scoring bonus. Now, to build a building, you just trade in the right blocks, take the tile from the main board, and put it on your personal playing board. To collect a mob, you've got to fight. Now, to be clear, they are not using all of the game's biomes. Uh, there are a lot of biomes in Minecraft, and I believe there's only four different biomes that are actually included in the game, uh, which is... Maybe a little bit annoying, but at the same time, it makes the game possible uh, because the scoring would not really be yeah. feasible uh, if they did because of the way they've gone with the game otherwise. So they've got the basic biomes. They've got your desert, your snowy mountain, your plains and your uh, forest. forest. Uh, so, so far we're on theme and uh, using game concepts for the mechanics that make sense to a Minecrafter. Uh, they've stayed on brand or license as we're talking in this episode. And unlike the Minecraft card game, it makes a lot of sense to a Minecrafter at this point. Now fighting's kind of neat in this game. Uh, each player starts with five weapon tiles. There are three of them are the poison potatoes we talked about earlier that do nothing. The other two are basic wooden weapons that do almost nothing. They do almost no damage. To fight a mob, you're going to shuffle your tiles and draw three of them. So there's a pretty good chance at the third of the game you're getting potatoes. You're going to look at the damage you did and compare it to the health of the mob. If you beat the mob's health, they take the tile. Now, the edges of the board have those treasure chests that have way more tools and weapons. Each weapon type is unique, and all of them are better than the stuff you start with in your base deck or your base treasure thing. Um, these, again, are pretty tied to the, the, the theme of the game. For example, if you have the pickaxe, it does a little more damage in your basic sword, but it also lets you mine a cube from the cube block every time you draw it. They even have a hoe for when you want to swing at a creeper and feel the inevitable explosive death approaching. Note, player death isn't actually a thing in this game. <laughs> yeah, there's no way for the monsters to attack you. They're just something out there that you can collect for, like I said, for bonuses, bonus points, and game scoring. Now, players are collecting these tiles and building on their player boards, trying for the best score during three separate scoring rounds. Now, a scoring round happens every time you get rid of a level of the mining block. So someone's taking the top four cubes off. The first scoring round is going to score based on biomes. 
you basically look at your board and find the largest group of tiles touching each other that have the same biome and score points on that. Different biomes score different points based on the rarity. And then the second and third scoring round is basically the same, but you're doing it for different things. The second round is based on the building materials that your tiles used. And the final round scores on building types. And that's pretty much it. Like, despite seeming a bit complicated based on the rulebook, gameplay is pretty straightforward, quick to teach, and quick to play. Yep. You build with biomes, crafting, mob busting, mining. Again, they really aimed straight and true at the players. Uh, and again, they played it for the gamers as well, because not only are you are you playing the the long game of these three rounds, and you need to start thinking about that round three, right from game, uh, right from round one, uh, or you're going to be in trouble uh, when someone has, you know, someone else has already thought of it. Uh, but also there's another sort of secondary game going on with that cube because there's the timing of when you trigger that scoring. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you want to, whether you want to hold off because you haven't got something or if you want to jump in there and grab those last cubes uh, to to get the, to, to finish round one because you've got the scoring advantage at that point mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and rush along. It, it really is uh, more layered than you would expect for... <laughs> a game based on an eight, you know, basically an eight bit digging game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got to admit, I, I wasn't, I was expecting another simple mass market game, basically someone cashing in on the Minecraft name. And I was pleased to find a real game here, a solid game, basically all the stuff we talked about earlier, but what makes a good licensed game? It has those. No, it's not a board game simulation to play Minecraft. Oh. It doesn't really feel like playing the video game. I have played some Minecraft. I do know a bit what I'm talking about here. You're doing some of the things you do in the video game in this board game. Like, yes, you have to spend time mining various resources in order to build structures. You also have to be cognizant of where you're building what. And that's actually the key part of this game is you need to watch what you build and when you build it. Then you also have to deal with the various monsters. And to do that, you're going to need to upgrade your equipment. All of that are all Minecraft things. Now, that being said, it's not all roses. Uh, we talked about some of the building material issues and the yeah. building cues are a, a bit slippery. Um, we, we, I, we actually had some, some cube issues in, in our plays already. Uh, and because you've built this cube of slightly slippery smaller cubes, um, not only is cube collapse a problem, but you've also got the issue of not really being able to maneuver it around. So mm -hmm. someone is going to have to get up and walk around the table in order to see what cubes are on the backside and what can be grabbed. And it's, it's, it, so it, while I, I really enjoy the mechanic they've gone with, um, you know, something like a small lazy Susan may be ideal yeah. for this because uh, it, it's problematic otherwise. But then if you spin your lazy Susan too fast, you could collapse the entire cube because the blocks are a little bit slippery. Um, I would have preferred to see a little more texture on them so that they they grip. And now that would have been that would have caused problems in the assembling of the cube. It. But once that cube was assembled, they'd actually stick together a little better. Yeah, just overall, some of the choices on component quality are are suspect. I'll use the term. Yep. No, absolutely, that's fair. Now, what I'm not sure about with this game, though, is how it's going to do, right? This is still brand new. Uh, there's not a lot of people talking about it as far as I, to be, well, I am 600 episodes behind on podcasts. Maybe I just haven't heard them yet, but I haven't seen a lot of hype on this game. I worry that this is a little too heavy for the mass market audience, the, the Minecraft audience, right? The, the video gamers who don't play hobby board games. So it may not get out to Minecraft video game players. And I also worry it's going to scare away hobby board gamers because like, oh, what the heck? It's a board game based on Minecraft. Licensed games are not good. So I, I don't know about that one. I, I worry it's going to miss the mark for both markets. Yeah, so uh, it, the release in North America is this week. So oh, that's okay. part of the problem. Uh, Friday, I believe, the night, the 15th is uh, is North American release there date. There you go. We're, it was released much the... earlier in Europe, and I'm not quite sure. I, I guess it was a spiel uh a spiel release date i you have to assume probably uh but uh yeah so we're we're on the cusp now we're we're actually again look at us we're we're new and fresh Cutting edge. <laughs> um so you know again we're in a place where licenses are getting much better but hobby gamers are still likely a little gun shy because of what we've talked about earlier uh what we may get is that as we talked about earlier that generation of newer gamers who can grow to accept that that there really are good licensed games out there 
and it's not all, you know, trouble with different stickers. I gotta admit, I'm still there. I, I, until I see a positive review, I don't trust a licensed game. Now, caveat being certain companies that produce good licensed games, I'm now going to trust, right? So, for example, Fancy Flight, if they put out a licensed game, I'm thinking that's probably pretty good. Now, having played this and a couple other games like Jaws and Horrified, Ravensburger just announced today they have the Back to the Future license. I think that was today or yesterday, just this week, they announced they had the Back to the Future license, and they are putting out a Back to the Future game in 2020. If I had heard that before playing this and playing Jaws and playing Horrified, I'd be like, yeah, whatever. It's, it's probably going to be another dark. It's going to be another um, labyrinth. But now, having played these good Ravensburger games, I'm definitely going to check out Back to the Future. Yep. No, I fully agree. Uh, this, you know, so much out there happening right now. Yeah. So, going back to Minecraft Builders and Biomes, I gotta say I enjoyed it. I am not a big Minecraft fan, but I have played. I I know enough about Minecraft, and I can see the tie-ins to the video game and the board game. I also really like the amount of strategy and forward thinking required to score well in this game. This is, I would almost call it a thinky filler. Like there is enough going on with play, having to plan three scoring phases ahead to put it into that category. I just wish the component quality were a bit stronger. Yeah, no, I fully agree. I did not expect the level of planning and forethought this game requires. And now while younger players can certainly learn it, um, mm -hmm. it is trickier than you would expect for what many people consider to be a kid's game. Yeah. I don't know that I should look at the age on this one. I don't know what market they were aiming for. But based on the cover of the box, I think kid's game, but then the fact it's Ravensburger, they do both, right? Ravensburger is such a mixed bag, right? They they put out Enchanted Forest and the Labyrinth that, well, I'm going to confuse people, the non-David Bowie Labyrinth. Like everyone knows that old classic Labyrinth game, that's Ravensburger, right? right. They're, they're a German toy company that got into board games. But then they also put out Steffenfeld's Carpe Diem, and they're the people behind all the Aaliyah big box and medium box games. Like they're, they're such a mixed bag. And I don't know where this falls in their marketing. I think it falls in with Jaws and Horrified and this new look to, yep. to Ravensburger. And so it's a 10 plus age. Yeah, so that's older, right? That's not yeah. kids. Now, community much. is saying six plus, and I sort of tend to agree with that. I mean, I once you... the strategy, though. The strategy is tough, but I, I mean, I feel like my kids probably could have gotten in, but again, gamer family. So, you know, your mileage may vary. Uh, and uh, Board Game Geek has it as a weight two, which I think is probably about right. Yeah, that's, which is, like I said, high for yep. most mass market. It's not trouble with stickers, right? Absolutely, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. It's not Minecraft the card game. Yep. So I got to say, if you're into Minecraft at all, check this out. Like, pick this game up. You're probably going to dig it. It is the best Minecraft tabletop game on the market by far that we've seen. If you're not a Minecraft fan, though, you still might want to check this out. If you want a nice, short, quick, thinky filler that's all about planning ahead and messing with your opponent's plans, this may be one of the perfect games for you. For a more in-depth look at miners, uh, Minecraft Builders and Biomes, head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews.